So if you want to jump on that 5G bandwagon, the great news is you no longer have to spaff your entire life savings on one of those shiny flagship smartphones. In 2021, there are plenty of budget-friendly options, including this fresh new effort from Samsung right here, the Galaxy A32 5G. Just 250 quid here in the UK bags you a fully fledged One UI device with a quad lens rear camera. But is it a worthy rival to the likes of Xiaomi's Mi 10T Lite, the Oppo Reno 4Z, etc., etc.? Well, I'm going to do a full unboxing and tour of the Galaxy A32 5G, including testing out the game and performance, the camera tech, all of that good stuff. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Oh, the glue they use on these stickers is just the worst. I'm like, actually shredding the box here. So what you get in here is one smartphone, of course. Quick start guide, USB Type-C cable. Still get an adapter, thankfully, with uh, hilarious pop-up action. And a Pokepin device to get your SIM in there. And sadly, that's it. No condom case bundled in there to help protect your Ear 32 5G. So you'll have to spunk up a little bit of extra cash for a cover if that's what you want. Anywho, that's the box. Now let's actually check out the phone itself. And first impressions are, I actually quite like uh, Samsung's design here on the Galaxy A32 5G. It is just a plastic backing, so nothing particularly special or sexy, uh, but it's got an almost sort of glass vibe to it with that glossy finish. This here is the blue model, but you can also grab the A32 in violet, black, or white as well. Or actually rather, it's uh, awesome blue, awesome violet, awesome black, or awesome white. Is it awesome? Well, it's definitely nice, but I guess that nice blue doesn't have quite as sexy a ring to it. And also, while a lot of smartphones these days have a separate sort of camera array to house all the lenses, here the lenses just actually poke straight out of that back end. Uh, so it certainly gives the A32 quite a distinctive look. Thankfully, the lenses don't poke too far out of the surface, uh, so you shouldn't have any problem using the A32 just lying flat on a desk. Other than that, it's fairly business as usual. You've got your Type-C USB port down below, a headphone jack, great to see, quite common on budget-friendly smartphones, of course. Uh, you've got an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor uh, right there with the built-in power button and symmetry and everything around the other side. So let's see if we've got any gas in the tank and we can get the Ear 32 5G all set up. And when you come to stick your SIM inside of the Ear 32 5G, you'll see you've got uh, two SIM slots in there, although the second one does also double up as a micro SD memory card slot. I like how the SIM tree is actually blue as well, just like the rest of the phone. That's a nice geeky little detail. And it's also worth pointing out that there's no water or dust resistance here on the Galaxy A32 5G, sadly. You'll have to bump up your budget a bit if you want proper IP rating uh, dust and water resistance, though apparently leaks have it that the new Galaxy A52, when that launches, will have an IP rating. So the Galaxy A32 5G all set up and ready to rock. And the good news is that it's actually the latest version of Android, Android 11, plus a nice bit of One UI version 3.1 as well. So you're all fresh and up to date, just like you would be if you grab the S21 flagships. Anyone who's had a uh, Samsung phone before will know how One UI works. It adds quite a lot of bonus features in on top of Android. So for one, you've got much greater customization than you would with just with a stock Android smartphone, uh, including the likes of uh, custom themes that you can set up and just to completely change the look and the feel of your desktops. You got lots of gesture control uh, thrown in there, including the very, very useful one-handed mode, uh, which is great if you've got tiny little stubby fingers and thumbs like I do. All you need to do is just swipe down the bottom edge of the display like so. As you can see, everything gets miniaturized, which just makes it so much easier uh, to use apps one-handed. Hello, you're going to open up. There we go. And you still get some of Samsung's excellent NOx security features slapped here on the Galaxy A32 5G as well, just to help keep your private super private. Unfortunately, as with those S21 flagship smartphones, you also get a buttload of duplication here on the A32 5G as well, including two web browsers. You've got Samsung Pay on top of Google Pay. You've got the likes of smart things for controlling all of your smart home goodies as well. And it's absolutely fine if you, you know, you're fully on board with the Samsung ecosystem, but if you use the Android alternatives, then it's just extra clutter. All of the other features you would hope and expect to find on a smartphone around the £250 price point are present and correct likes of NFC for your contactless payments and all that good stuff. As for the storage, well, Samsung's been a little bit stingy on that front because you only get 64 gigs here in this UK model. There's no option to upgrade that at all on the Samsung website. Uh, but at least you do have that micro SD memory card support if you only have a single SIM slapped inside of the Galaxy A32 5G. So you can slap in a memory card of up to one terabyte in size that's giving you plenty of expandability, something that you don't even get on those Billy Big Bollocks S21 flagship phones. Now, I already briefly mentioned the fact that you get those NOx security features here on the A32 5G. You also get an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor for actually unlocking your device, which is always great to see. Touch wood so far seems reasonably responsive uh, here on the Ear 32. You don't actually need to push in the power button or anything, literally just gently tap your finger 
against the sensor and as you can see you're straight in and another alternative unlocking option here on the a32 is the uh, face unlock as well just using that selfie cam which as you can see is nice and swift as well as long as the lighting's right that seems to do the job nicely it's actually kind of almost nostalgic to see a nipple notch in 2021. Obviously, most smartphones, they uh, have a little cut-out orifice thing for their selfie cams instead. Only intrudes ever so slightly on that 6.5-inch PLS display, which, as you can see, is surrounded by fairly thick bezels, especially down below here. So this is similar to IPS technology, so you can expect sort of slightly poppy colours, but nothing too eye gougingly vibrant or vivid like you would get from an OLED display. The top brightness levels aren't exactly eye searing either. Hopefully should be all right for a fairly sunny day. Viewing angles, again, fine if not great, but my main beef with the Samsung Galaxy A32's display is the fact that it's a 720p HD panel, not full HD, so you don't get the finer detail levels when you're, you know, browsing your photo collection or just enjoying a bit of Netflix or whatever. Although at least you do get Widevine L1 support, so that does mean you can stream HD quality content on the likes of Netflix. But considering that a lot of budget rivals, even those that are 50 to 100 pounds cheaper, now come with full HD visuals, it's a real shame that Samsung has stuck with 720p. And sadly, there's no 90 hertz refresh rate option here on the E32 either. Again, a fairly common feature on budget smartphones now. On the audio front, it's a single bottom-mounted speaker here on the Air 32. Uh, on top volume, though, reasonable clarity and a good bit of wallop to it as well. So let's just bump that volume up. pounds that you can get yourself in early 2021. But of course, I'm expecting an absolute flood of new budget handsets to hit the market very, very shortly. So yeah, absolutely fine output. Certainly on those top volume levels, be absolutely fine for enjoying, again, a bit of YouTube, a bit of Netflix, whatever. Of course, if you are going to be listening to some music, you'll want to slap a headphone a headphone, some headphones, into uh, the bottom of the A32 there. Otherwise, you've got Bluetooth 5 support as well if you want to go wireless. And you do have Dolby Atmos support on here on the A32 as well if you've got some supported kit connected. Now, let's move on to the performance. That's one area where certainly the Galaxy A32 does not seem to struggle because you've got MediaTek's Dimensity 720 chipset on here, which was launched last year. And it's definitely well up to the task of whatever you throw at it, as long as your apps don't crash. Samsung, again, hasn't been super generous on the memory front. You've got just four gigs of RAM crammed into this thing. But as you can see there, Geekbench score is very respectable, both on the single core and the multi-core. And so far, after a few hours of play, I haven't noticed much in the way of, you know, judders or anything like that. Just a couple of random cases where an app has closed down. It too does not seem to struggle because you've got media tech. And of course, you've got that Samsung game launcher feature as well, uh, which just basically acts as a hub to access all of your games and gives you a few extra bonus features thrown in. Got a bit of notification block and all that good stuff. So to test out the gaming chops of the Galaxy A32, I thought I would embarrass myself with a bit of Call of Duty Mobile, which as you can see, there, tops off at medium graphic quality and high frame rate. And certainly, bugger all complaints from me as far as the gaming experience here on the Galaxy A32 goes. I uh, didn't see a single judder. It was a nice smooth performance the entire time I was gaming. The screen responsiveness is perfect for this kind of frantic run and gun gameplay. And either the school kids are taking a break today, otherwise they just really can't be buggered anymore because I was absolutely mowing down everything in my path. It was glorious. As for yonder battery, well, it's a 5,000 milliamp cell that is stuffed inside of the Galaxy A32. Uh, so this should hopefully keep you going all day long, no worries, even with plenty of game and media streaming, camera play, all that good stuff. You've got the usual power saving modes and everything as well. And it's only 15 watt charging, but I guess fairly sort of standard for this sort of price point. And as always, let's finish up this unboxing and full tour of the Galaxy A32 5G with a squint at that camera tech. And what you get slapped on the back end here is a quad lens setup. And that's set up here by a 48 megapixel primary sensor. And certainly from a quick play, this seems to be the standard sort of camera UI experience you get from the more mid-range to flagship style Galaxy devices. So for instance, you get Samsung's uh, AI smarts on here, the scene optimizer, which just helps to uh, pick out what you're trying to take a picture of. And it can throw up handy suggestions like, oh, you might want to use the night mode if, uh, you know, the light's a bit low. I've done a quick bit of testing with the Galaxy A32's camera and so far seems to be absolutely fine for everyday snaps as long as the lighting isn't too tricky. You get quite natural looking colours and respectable levels of detail too. And at any point if you fancy more pulled back view of the action while well, you can swap to that 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. This seems to cope a little bit less well with uh, trickier lighter conditions. It certainly offers up a very different viewpoint. Should be quite good for those dramatic action shots. 
You've also got a 2 megapixel depth sensor slapped on the back of the Galaxy A32 for your portrait shots. I'm not sure why it's portrait here and not live focus as Samsung delights in calling it. This adds a nice bokeh style effect in the background, really helps your subject to stand out. And you can also change the intensity of that either before or after you've taken the shot. And while you don't get quite as many bonus modes here on the Galaxy A32 as you do with the likes of the S21, obviously you do get a few extra little bits thrown in there, including a food mode, of course, obligatory if you're on Instagram or whatever. You've got the pro mode as well, so you can dive on in there, piss about with the ISO levels, the white balance, the brightness. The final lens on the back end of the Galaxy A32 is a 5 megapixel macro lens, uh, and regular viewers will know my thoughts on macro lenses in general. Um, see, so yeah. And then as mentioned before, you've got that night mode for when the lights are a bit low, a bit more ambient. Uh, you can still get a nice sort of bright, fairly balanced shot. And of course, Samsung usually does pretty well on the video front as well. If you dive on into the video mode, as you can see there, you can shoot at Full HD at 30 frames per second. Otherwise, you can bump it up to Ultra HD at 30 FPS. And last up, you also have an 8 megapixel selfie snapper up front in a ye old nipple notch. And this should be absolutely fine again for your everyday Instagram shenanigans and all that good stuff. Seems to do a reasonable job, even in quite bright conditions. And you can have that pulled out view, which makes obviously a massive dramatic difference. And let's just completely ignore slash delete the one that I just took right there and switch to one that I did Blue Peter style uh, earlier. It's quite a bright sunny day outside. I do look a little bit sort of smooth, a little bit too clean. Some of those wrinkles have been ironed over, even though I've got the beauty mode active. You do have a portrait mode that you can get on the go as well, which produces really nice bokeh style blurring again. And if you fancy yourself as a bit of a vlogger, you can shoot full HD 30 FPS video with that front facing shooter too. And there you have it. That's my full unboxing and tour of Samsung's Galaxy A32 5G, which you can grab from Samsung UK right now for 250 quid. And at the time I shot this video, I actually got a free pair of Samsung Galaxy Buds uh, bundled in there with this bad boy as well. I gotta say I was surprised to see the specs were so similar to the Galaxy A12 which is an even more budget friendly Samsung phone that was just launched. Uh, 160 quid here in the UK. I've done a full unboxing of that as well which should be going live uh, tomorrow with any luck. And the main difference between those two handsets being the fact that you've got that Dimensity 720 packed here in the A32 which smooths over the rough performance of the A12. Definitely well worth the upgrade just for that and of course you've got that 5G future proofing too. And yeah it's great to see the latest freshest Android and One UI uh, launcher slapped on here as well. The overall user experience is absolutely fine. I'm quite enjoying using the camera and stuff as well. So it certainly seems to be a respectable uh, smartphone for around that 250 quid. It's just a shame that it's a 720p display and there's a couple of other areas like the memory and the storage where Samsung hasn't exactly been super generous. But anyway, that's my thoughts. If you want to check out my roundup of the best budget 5G smartphones you can buy right now in 2021, that is live. So go check that out. I've also reviewed basically all of the budget smartphones I could get my hands on around the 200 to 300 pound price point. So go check those out too. And let me know what you think of this bad boy down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear your own thoughts. Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all that YouTube shenanigans, and now I need to go have a lie down. Thanks very much, everyone. Love you.